Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Ochsner Hospital System decreased cost by $100 million for 30,000 of their patients. Now that's a rather long, complicated headline, but we're going to break it down. So, first off, the Ochsner Healthcare System. It is, many of you are familiar with it, it's very famous. It was founded in 1942. It is centralized in New Orleans, Louisiana, but obviously it's a multi-hospital system sort of all over the Louisiana area. It even extends out of the state now. They've got a total of 40 facilities, and they've got 4.5 thousand doctors, four and a half thousand doctors, and they got like 35,000 employees total. So it's huge. It's a major hospital system in the South. So it's no small potatoes. Now, Dr. David Carmouche is their executive vice president of value-based care and network operations. And he was recently interviewed by Stacy Richter from the Relentless Healthcare Value Podcast. Now, everybody, stop watching this video right now and go to the Relentless Healthcare Value website and listen to this podcast interview of Dr. David Carmouche by Stacey Richter. It's 30 minutes long. You can listen to it in the car. It is awesome. You will be so much smarter as a result of having listened to this podcast because Dr. David Carmouche explains in detail how Oshner was able to achieve this savings while financially maintaining or even improving the hospital system's bottom line. That's right. Saving money actually financially benefited the hospital. So this is what we're looking for, right? This is what we're looking for in value-based care. This is where a hospital system actually wants value-based care. This is where a hospital can benefit from value-based care. It can be done, and Dr. David Carmouche and his colleagues at Oshner have proven it. And let me tell you how they did it. So, they took about 30,000 Medicare Advantage beneficiaries, and they took full capitated risk on those 30,000 Medicare Advantage beneficiaries. They compared it to... 30,000 traditional Medicare patients that they had coming into Oshner, and guess what? But they still had them in an ACO, right? They had Medicare Shared Savings Program, and uh, Dr. Carmouche points out that they were able to take care of these 30,000 Medicare Advantage folks for a hundred million dollars less than the traditional Medicare ACO folks. Look at that. Capitation and Medicare Advantage like blows an ACO out of the water. That's because a capitated Medicare Advantage plan, like value-based care to a certain extent is a euphemism for capitation. So they were able to take capitated payments per member and translate that into tremendous savings. Now, let's look at the numbers more in detail. So on average, a beneficiary over the age of 65 is about $18,000 per person per year in terms of overall health care costs. So if you take that benchmark amount and you multiply it by the 30,000 folks that were on traditional Medicare, that means the traditional Medicare folks cost about $540 million a year. And that at $100 million less, that means the Medicare Advantage folks come in at $440 million. And if you take the 440 and you divide it by the 540, that means that the Medicare Advantage folks came in 19% less than the traditional Medicare folks. So here you have not 2% less, you have almost 20% lower health care costs for a Medicare Advantage population. Now you might say, okay, and this is both, listen, they're all in Louisiana, they're all over the age of 65, and if anything, folks on Medicare Advantage typically uh, are the more medically underserved, and they tend to be like poor. So one might argue that from a risk adjustment standpoint, the Medicare Advantage folks might even be considered sicker than the traditional Medicare folks. However, they came in at $100 million less. Now, what did they do? They completely changed the way at the same hospital system with the same docs. They treated these two populations very differently. They treated these two populations very differently. What did they do for the Medicare Advantage folks? They had frequent health risk assessments for those patients. They did in-home visits for those patients. They had outpatient case management for those patients. They had post-acute care, in other words, like, 
like skilled nursing facility and, and subacute hospitalization utilization management. So in other words, they watched them after they were discharged from the hospital closely when they were still institutionalized. They had tremendous increase in primary care utilization for these folks. Look at this. All this happens like outside of the hospital, in home visits, outpatient care management, post post acute management. That's outside of the hospital. Look at this. All of this care was done outside of a hospital. Aha! The key to lower health care costs is more care outside of the hospital, not inside of the hospital. So they said that, look, in order for value-based care to, uh, to be successful with these folks, they had to use data, they had to use analytics, they had to have care coordinators, they had to have call centers, they had to do more outreach to people in their homes where they were, both on the phone and in person. Whoa! And Dr. Carmouche says, look, from a Medicare standpoint, like, Austria, like, has to go this way. Because in terms of traditional fee-for-service Medicare, like, the, uh, the, the unit cost to take care of a Medicare beneficiary is, like, almost always less than the reimbursement by traditional Medicare. So, in other words, if somebody on Medicare needs a gallbladder surgery and Medicare reimburses $4,000 for that gallbladder surgery, like, it's going to cost the hospital, like, $5,000, and they're going to lose $1,000 on every single one of those gallbladder surgeries. So, Dr. Kamush is like, look, for your Medicare population, if, if you want to make it financially viable, you got to go in the direction of this capitated Medicare advantage. You actually want to, he says... Very interestingly, he says, look, for a Medicare population, you actually want to take as much risk as you can. And what does that allow you to do? He says, what does that allow you to do? He says, it allows you to change the way you pay your doctors. Isn't that interesting? He said, look, their primary care physicians are no longer compensated on RVUs, which is essentially a proxy for fee-for-service and billing anyway. They don't... They, they don't they don't pay their PCPs based upon how much they bill. Instead, they pay them based upon the performance of their patient panel. They reimburse their primary care physicians based upon population health, manage population health management metrics for their patient panel. What's that called? Keeping people healthy and keeping them out of the hospital. Being proactive, not being reactive. What's that called? The right thing to do. Now, they also did it for their specialists. They just they didn't do all their compensation, but they said part of the compensation for their specialists was based on the clinical variation of that specialist care. In other words, what was their length of stay? What was their resource resource utilization? Aha! By by almost by definition, it admits that the specialists do have clinical variation. And then number two, unwarranted care. He uses the specific example of elective C-sections that didn't need to happen. Now, so for specialist care, it's doing stuff that didn't need to happen in the first place. And then two, when you are doing stuff, make sure that it's not as variable in terms of resource utilization, deviation from the mean, if you will. So note that as a hospital system, Oshner found a way to make value-based care, true value-based care work. How do they do it? They did it in the setting of capitation with Medicare Advantage plans. Two, they did it with care outside of the hospital. And three, they changed the way they paid doctors. Guess what, America? It can be done. It has been done by Osher and David Carmouche. Thank you to Stacey Richter for interviewing him. Thank you to David Carmouche and all his colleagues for making this happen. I wanted to bring this amazing su success story to all of you. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Scene.